What is going on? <sighs> How's everybody doing today? First off, I'm going to start off by saying this. I don't want to hear a damn thing about global warming for at least a week. And I hope everybody's okay with that because <sighs> I don't know. Somebody said ice cream. Yes, I said ice cream. That was me. I'm going to try to adjust this camera here because I'm a dingbat. There we go. Hopefully that's a little bit better. <sighs> Man. So, it, listen, it is cold as shit outside. I'm sure everybody is freaking aware of that. Um, Tall Heather is currently down in Florida where it's a balmy 60-something degrees. We got Del. Belzer out there at negative 38 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah, I get it. So, um, let me just say, I'm glad I'm not homeless anymore, okay? Because, like, 17 years ago, I was living in my truck in a winter that wasn't this bad, and it was miserable. So, uh, yes, it is cold as crap. It says David Heath. But uh, in any event, and I'm not even cutting my diesel trucks off at this point because it's too hard to get them going. So I'm just leaving them running. Um, <laughs> man, uh, you guys in the comments are awesome and fast as hell too. So in any event, um, uh, like I said, glad I'm not homeless right now because I've played that game and it's not... It's not a fun game. So, um, uh, a couple little hacks. Uh, you know that if there is somebody that's cold, you can give them like a Waffle House gift card or a McDonald's gift card and they can go into those restaurants and because they're a paying customer, you know, they can sit there and listen, 20 bucks at Waffle House will buy you a lot of cups of coffee uh, for somebody to war warm up. So, uh, please, you know, try to help people out. Um, it is, uh, it is not fun to be out there in this weather. Um, by the way, this is not alcohol. It's carbonated water. In any event, how's everybody doing today? Other than being cold. Um, I've just been trying to like figure out like how, how to like help people make a difference, stuff like that. While I was thinking about it, I found out that one of my employees had a tree come through his window this morning at approximately five o'clock in the morning through his bedroom window. It's weird. They've been trying to have a baby for a long time. I'm sure his wife was praying for wood. God answered it with a tree through her bedroom window. Probably wasn't exactly what she was looking for, but you know, I mean, these things happen. You take what you can get, right? So, um, uh, I'm going to lower this desk a little bit. Look at that. There we go. Apparently that's as low as it goes. <laughs> Kimmy boy says too much wood. Absolutely. Um, I don't know. I mean, and it, the thing is, is with it so cold outside, he's got vinyl siding on his house. He can't fix a damn thing because if he messes with vinyl siding, it's just going to break into a million pieces right now. So literally his only option is throw a couple pieces of plywood up there with some insulation between them. And uh, wait for warmer weather to fix it. But uh, let's just say that his house got wrecked worse than a college girl um, in her first year. So, you know, geez. Um, but uh, cold, cold, cold. Oh, my goodness. So, um, by the way. I really appreciate it when people in the comments are like, hit the plus sign. That actually does help from what I understand. There's over 200 of you in this live. And with uh, pretty much everybody off for the holidays, I am I am shocked that you guys are here. And I'm also grateful. But uh, Hit Me Boy says insulation and duct tape and a plastic sheet. That makes a lot of sense. I'm actually going to call him and let him know. Um, so... <laughs> Michael Gary says, now I understand why you don't do these on TikTok. You get banned because of guidelines. Absolutely. absolutely, freaking lutely In any event, um, uh, 
I am I am reminded of what my high school biology teacher slash science teacher told us one year. She says, if you're ever homeless, newspaper is your friend. And we all went, why is our biology teacher teaching us about what to do when we're homeless? Yeah, um, apparently newspaper is a great insulator inside of your clothing. And um, whether it's crinkled up or even put into sheets, it's a great insulator. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm walking around and I had known this fact from like high school. And I'm driving past a bus stop and I see a guy... Uh, taking a newspaper, balling it up into pieces, and stuffing it into his coat sleeve. And I'm like, apparently she's not the only one that knew that. <laughs> Jay Ray says, if I divorce my wife, is she still my sister? Asking for a friend. You know, the problem is, is you can't get rid of sisters, you know? So, uh, you know, just as long as your sister's name isn't Bob, you're probably doing all right. But, um, you know, that's all the advice I can give you here. Man. So uh, for those of you that are talking about thermals, I see Del Bells are in there, uh, says silk uh, under thermals are perfect. I bought some something called Thermal Johns off of Amazon and I had to take them off. They were too hot. I was outside, man. Those things. Holy cow, they are warm. In any event, it's been an interesting, um, it's been an interesting turn of events. With business, we now have plumbing completely up and running, and that's that's turning out to be fun. And I cannot wait for the business from frozen pipes because right now people aren't calling, they've just lost water. Soon they will discover that those pipes have broken and then they will begin to call in. And so I'm I'm kind of hoping we can make a little bit of money with that. But what we're not making money on is pumping septic tanks right now because I'm not going to fill up a metal container with a thousand gallons of poo and then have it freeze in the container and break it. So we're not pumping septic tanks. Chuck Norris over here says, screw Carhartt. I have a triple fat goose coat like from the 80s. That thing is warm AF. Listen, somebody gave me a U.S. Army jacket from the Arctic Expedition. Um... I cannot hang it on a hanger because the thing is too heavy. It breaks even the heavy duty hangers. It weighs about 30 pounds. And um, I don't care where you go. You're not going to be cold in that thing. Uh, Mike Onto says, legit, never thought about septic freezing. So listen, it comes out of the ground at 55. Most of the people that are wanting to be pumped right now are out in Sapphire, which is two hours away. So what happens whenever you take a thousand gallons of 55 degree uh, septage, put it in a metal truck that's negative 22, and then hurl it down the interstate for two hours at 60 miles an hour, we're probably going to freeze that thing. Um, so uh, I guess that leaves you with a giant shit sickle in the back of your truck. I'm not trying to do that. So... Uh, Sonder Ling says, why do you guys use septic tanks in the USA? Uh, they use them in pretty much every country, whether people realize it or not. The thing is, is like, if you live in London, you're not going to hear about a septic tank because you guys have city sewer. But if you go onto the outskirts of England, Scotland, Ireland, um, the Middle East, they, they, they have these systems, not, not everywhere, but they're definitely there. Um, septic tanks have been used all across the world for thousands of years. So it's not just us, you know, dumb gun toting, you know, people in the U S it's, it's pretty much the world over. It's a system that works. Um, whiskey lover says, which would you rather have a shit sickle or a shit missile? Um, I don't know, uh, probably a shit missile. Cause that would make one hell of a splatter, but, uh, Somebody asked, why not add a heating apparatus? I, because I don't know how. So, um, going to have an interesting little YouTube series that's coming out for you guys. Um, not entirely uh, sure how many uh, uh, episodes that there's going to be, but uh, one of my employees has done and got himself arrested. And he was renting from us with employee housing. It was off site, and he was paying practically nothing. And, um, so 
I'm the landlord. He's got himself arrested. He's going to spend the next 90 days in jail. I've got to go over there and check on the house. And I didn't have time to. So I sent somebody else to check on the house and they came back and said, um, bro, I don't have any words and told me that I had to go look at it myself. And I did. Uh, and I uh, have recorded the initial entry into the building for you guys. Um, Tanya right now is editing that literally as we speak. That's going to be about a 10 minute video that gets released on the tube of views or YouTube. And, um, and uh, let's just say you're going to be shocked. So um, yeah. Uh, uh, Project scrap heap says done himself a mischief. Yes, he did on his own in personal time. He picked up two felonies. So like, not a lot I can do for him there. I did get him out of jail, but then he like went and got himself back in jail and I can't help you after that. So, um, uh, what's a good substitute for siding? I have no idea. Somebody says you bald headed hillbilly. Interesting. And they keep spamming it. Hi, Jack. Jack spamming. So SUV Nomad says, are you hiring? And the answer is yes. Uh, but in any event, back to what we're talking about. Uh, we're going to we're gonna post a video about what we found inside the house. And I think you guys are just going to be uh, just blown away. So hopefully we'll see that. Ah, you've asked what ice cream I am eating. So uh, I will go get that and be right back. Hold on. All right, so you guys have probably never seen this. And if you have seen it, you can tell me where it's from. But it's called Dadu Vanilla Ice Cream, okay? And, <laughs> and if you open this thing up, and seriously, you guys, you guys got to guess where this thing is from. So, uh, Dadu. And it's, it's a little cup. It's just a little cup of ice cream. And and it's like soft serve in a cup. And it's freaking great. And it's four degrees outside. So why not eat some ice cream? Mm. That is so good. And so far, everybody that has guessed uh, is wrong. It is not from Germany. And it's not from Mexico. So... Um, it's very cold outside, but um, listen, uh, it's impossible to be cold when you're dead inside. So, you know, I get to eat ice cream when it's cold. And yes, I chew ice cream. So, in any event, uh, Dadu is actually an ice cream from uh, Eastern Europe. Like, think uh, Ukraine, uh, Russia kind of stuff. So, um Just sending a text message real quick. There we go. Um, yeah, it's frozen. I must chew it. And that's that's a thing. <laughs> Dimitri, uh, yeah, Dimitri says you can get it in a, in a Russia store and it's from Russia. There you go. And it's great. It's like the best ice cream you could possibly get. So, mm, it's so good. In any event, so we had we had a guy get himself arrested. That's going to be a whole YouTube saga. I hope you guys tune in for that. And then um, uh, there has been some debate on whether or not I should do a go live. And so I would just like to ask you guys, do you think I should do a go live? Um, you know, uh do you guys think I should jump on uh, n and not do a go live, but do a marathon, a a subathon, a 
staying online and letting you guys see every freaking um, aspect of running the business, my day-to-day -day life. It would, it would be sort of like Jake Barr when he does a subathon where you basically sleep on stream and, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a stream of your life 24 seven. It's called a subathon. Um, do you guys think I should do it? Um, when is it going up? Oh, the YouTube video is going up probably tomorrow. Ah, the rock and donkey says, how much will it disrupt the flow of your business? Probably a lot is probably going to disrupt the flow of the business a lot. Um, and, and, and what I'm worried about is conversations with customers and having those on the live. That's, that's actually what stopped me from doing it the most so far right now. So, um, and, uh, Michael Bush says, what's the duration of the subathon? That's really going to depend on you guys because you, I only stay on as long as I get paid. So, you know, you got to buy time to continue to torture me and torment me. And I just, I don't know if that's like, I, I don't know how long you guys would pay to torture me and force me to be online all of the time. So. Hmm. Somebody said, can we use this as continuing education? That's freaking great. I love that. Uh, so, uh, listen, I'm getting some conflicting information from uh, my uh, Prism Stream software. It says that YouTube is not receiving the data good. Is 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 the picture clear for you guys? So... Sonder Link says, oh my freaking God, I couldn't imagine doing something like this in my country. Like what? So, okay, cool. Awesome. Good deal. Thank you for the update on YouTube. Um, in any event, um, had some interesting turn of events. We had a little bail bonding incident the other day. I think I posted a story for you guys about that. Um, but my question is, is um, as I start doing more and more videos for you guys, what kind of videos do you guys want? Do you want the uh, work stories, the crazy customers, the educational videos? Like I am, I am, uh, I'm, I'm very, I'm very interested in uh, what to make more for you guys. And that's kind of like why I wanted to do the subathon was to see, um, you know, what people tuned in more for. So, and it sounds like all of you guys are saying all of the above. So, okay, that's awesome. Um, and let's see. <laughs> Greg Mick says, I deal with crazy customers all the time. Um, I have recently had to explain to somebody, uh, that, uh, I am not responsible for what they do in their house. We pumped their septic tank six months ago. It is backing up today. And they called me and wanted me to, wanted to know what I did that caused their septic tank to back up because I was the last person to touch it. And I'm like, do you realize it worked for six months? after I left and everything was fine. I, I, I really have no idea what to tell you. So, bro, you talking in interim? I have no idea what David Heath is talking about in any event. Um, Timothy Shack says, has anybody gotten you with a glitter surprise yet? Uh, they have not, but I did get, I did get a letter today, um, and I am I am very curious if this letter has glitter in it. So, I mean, we can open it on the live. It looks like a Christmas card. It's from Rachel, um, and I don't know. It just sounds. I don't know if you guys can hear it, but it just sounds like it has glitter in it. And I wonder, like, like, 
I really wonder if we should do another glitter challenge. So I'll just open this up, little fan mail from you guys. It's actually it's actually addressed to James Butler at Well and Septic Life. And um, let's see. You know what? I don't think it actually, like this is not a glitter bomb, I don't think. Oh, there we go. <laughs> very, very cool card right here. Uh, so far, this is the first and only uh, Christmas card that I've gotten. And it is a letter that says, uh, sorry about my spelling. First off, thank you for teaching me about septic tanks, proper maintenance, and care. The world, the world is a merrier place because of you. Uh, not only are you entertaining, but I also learn things watching you. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Love, Raisin Blood. Blah, blah. Love at Raven Bloodbane. That is super awesome. So, uh, awesome. I'm, I'm actually going to put that up here. Ta-da. Where's it going? I have no idea. It's going to go right there. Okay, cool. So the whole point in these shelves is literally to put up the stuff that you guys uh, sent. Um, uh, Pinkopotamus. Yes, I got one Christmas card. Um, mainly because my family lives with me and the family that doesn't live with me, I don't really talk to. I, like, I don't get a lot of Christmas cards. So, you know. <laughs> Brandy Lee in the comments on YouTube apparently has a whole theory about me and the wives thing. So, you know, there you go. Um, <laughs> Michael Bush says wholesome as fuck. There we go. Um, so, oh, I see that you guys noticed, uh, yeah, I see you guys noticed something. Hold on for a second. Apparently I'm not supposed to be on YouTube with that. As a matter of fact, I just got a text message from my social media person that was like, you need to put that away. So whatever. I carry it with me all the time. I, I didn't know. I'll get demonetized now. Um, and it, it's a G19. So in any event. Uh, so uh, this holiday season, I'm pretty much working the entire time. Uh, the rest of the company is off. But today I went out, did a chlorination and um, did a service call, helped somebody out with their septic tank. And I spent the majority of the day on the phone, walking people through their septic problems. Um, it's interesting. Somebody told me a long time ago, go and start a business. You'll make a million dollars. And I haven't. What I have done is end up working seven days a week for the past seven years. So if you plan on starting a business, uh, don't think that it's all just going to, you know, magically be profits and money and all of that stuff. You're going to work a hundred hours a freaking week. Um, just to get the shit done. So somebody asked what happened with DC low life. That's interesting. I haven't heard that name in a long time. So Dwan slim Harris, what happened with DC low life? He left, um, after he got caught using drugs multiple times and I fired him and he left. Um, blushing, blushing by butterfly says at James Butler, read my comment, please. See, the problem is, is that the comments go by so fast, most of the time I can't read them. But you can just email me and I'll see it. So, in any event, uh, wanted to get on here, just wish everybody a very merry, you know, Christmas holiday season. And, uh, you know all that stuff and chat with you guys and read the comments. Um, Daniel K says, James question. Is it safe to use a CO2 plunger? I know a YouTube plumber, uh, Roger Wakefield says not to use them. You realize that's a little tiny gas explosion in your, in your, in your, uh, septic sewer pipe. So for those of you that don't know, 
when you clog your toilet up, right, there is a blockage in the pipe. And for most people, that pipe is made of plastic. Okay, it's PVC. Um, and and so instead of you know plumbering it out or you know rooting it out or whatever, uh, several companies have invented this thing that takes pressurized gas and slams it in there and shoots it and gets the clog out. And most of the time, this works without a problem. Until it doesn't and it busts your pipe and now you're having to replace the pipe because you decided to fix a clog with an explosion. Like, I don't know. It's not worth the risk for me. It's not. And here's the thing. The uh, the tool that you use to get the clog out is cheaper than the CO2 explosion gun. So you're going to buy a more expensive tool to risk your pipe. It just doesn't make sense. More ice cream. In any event, um, yeah, if you can't clear it with a plunger, it's just time to call a plumber. Wow, ice cream in the mustache. It's delicious. So, all right, Sect is asking a question. Sect has said, why are you allowed to arrest people like in your last video? Here's a dealio. I am a North Carolina licensed bail bondsman. Um, and what that means is, is, you know, if somebody has skipped their bond, or skipped on bail, um, I am allowed to go get them. And that means that I can't arrest them. I'm allowed to do that. It's a thing. And uh, I'm not the police. I don't need a search warrant to go inside their house. Um, I can just go arrest them if they have an outstanding warrant. I'm allowed to do it. And so you guys know me on here, and it's, it's, it's very funny to see what people pay attention to. The name of my channel is Well and Septic Life. But to the majority of the people that watch me, I'm only a septic guy. And I and I work on wells just as much as I work on septics. And um but that's that's a pretty mundane blue collar job and I need some excitement in my life. And so what I do is I do bail bonding at night on the side to sort of add some spice to my life, you know? Um and the, the general idea is, is that it pays a little bit of money. Now, I'm not the kind of bail bondsman that goes down to the jail and fills out the paperwork and all of that bullshit to get you out of jail because that's boring. That is boring, monotonous, just dumb work, right? However, I am the bail bondsman that when you can't find somebody, like when when another bail bondsman can't find somebody, they can call me, or if it's a bondsman from out of state and they have to find somebody, um, they can call me and I'll go find the person. Um, and I get paid for that. So in this case, somebody called me and said, hey, listen, I can't find this person. And I said, okay, pay me. And they did. And I went and got the person for them. So I am allowed to do that, but I do wells, septics, plumbing, I'm a bondsman. Um, I can also officiate weddings, um, you know, uh, and I mainly just got that because, uh, you know, a couple of friends of mine weren't able to get married because of their orientation and they couldn't find somebody to officiate. So screw it. I'll go do that too. Um, and <laughs> Canadian Cracker says, what do you do? Pump septic tanks and arrest fools? I mean, kind of, if you're dumb enough to miss your court date, I'll, I'll go do it. Um, it's, it's a lot of fun and it's, how do, how do I put it like gently or nicely or whatever? Motherfuckers see me weighing in at about 130 pounds and they assume that they can outrun me, which just because you're taller than me is not going to mean that you're going to outrun me. Um, they assume that they can fight better than me, and they assume that the taser doesn't work. Um, and, you know, it's like, I'm going to win because I kind of do this for a living. I'm a professional at it. I do this for money. So I'm going to win. And just the number of times that it ends up in a fight and there's a 200 pound guy that goes to jail anyway is hilariously funny to me. So, uh, 
Um, now, the thing, and 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 blessed, blessed saving grace says uh, that I'm a real life badass. Not really. I just come prepared. Okay. Here is the dealio, right? If you're a guy running on bond, you're hanging out at a friend's house thinking that because you're at your friend's house or your mom's house that you're safe. You think that the like like the cops aren't going to be able to find you because you're at your friend's house. Well, here's the deal. As a bondsman, I'm going to go offer your crackhead mom $50 for your location, okay? And because she's a crackhead, she, she's going to take the 50 bucks and she's going to tell me where you're at. And I know I'm going to get my money's worth because I'm not going to give her the 50 bucks until I find you. All right. And then while you're chilling at your friend's house, like smoking up and further wasting your money, I'm going to show up with tools and friends. Okay. Like I'm not going to show up alone. What are you nuts? Okay. I'm going to show up with, you know, equipment and somebody with tools versus somebody without tools. Hey, the guy without tools, he's up Shit's Creek. And listen, I'm an expert on Shit's on Shit's Creek. So, in any event, yeah, I really 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 enjoy the bail bonding side of things. Now, I'm starting to slow down and not do it as much, but um cuz cuz I'm just busy, but it is a blast. Uh blessed saving graces. I didn't mean no disrespect. I meant cool real life action star do, do, doing it all. Yeah, I didn't think you meant disrespect at all. Um, Randy Pabo says, what happened to the worker that didn't clean out his work truck? I missed the outcome. I'm going to tell you what the outcome is. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the worker that just got himself arrested on two new felonies. And I bonded him out and he got arrested again. And now he's back in jail for 90 days. Okay. Um, and that's the guy that is now having a whole ass series done by me on his employee housing situation because it's a freaking disaster. And Mr. Chuck Norris is asking his question repeatedly, sir, I, I don't talk about that part of my life. So, um, yeah. Yeah. I appreciate you asking. You can kind of make an educated guess, but I don't talk about that on social media. So, but I appreciate it. Um, uh, Canadian Cracker says, body cam footage for the Bondsman. That would be a good show. You know, the funny thing is, is I have wanted to do bail bonding content so much. And we have the body cams. Um, and... Honestly, I'm just worried about getting sued. And the other thing is, is I don't know if you've seen on the cops videos, but when you have a body cam and you get in a fight, you don't see anything. Okay. Like if you're in a shootout, great. Cause you've, you've, you've got some distance there, but if you're in a fight, you know, amateurs fight at a distance, professionals fight very close to each other. And the body cam is just going to pick up the other guy's shirt. And I don't think it'll be that entertaining. And I don't have a desire to go do the thing like Patty Mayo does. Patty Mayo is a actor slash bail bonding slash I don't know what the hell he is. But I think all his stuff is like scripted and fake and all of that stuff. And I don't want to do that. But I'm not sure how to get like a good bail bonding show going um, and still like follow all the privacy laws and all that other stuff. So I don't know. Uh, Jackson McKinney says, what's the easiest transition from regular work to trade you would recommend? A good answer would be really helpful for me considering the future. <laughs> this is the thing. This is how you get into the trades. And this is what nobody freaking realizes. Let's say that, that, that I work as a loss prevention person at uh, Walmart, which I used to do that. And I wanted to go get in the trade. The way you get in the trade is you go to a business like an electrical company, a plumbing company, anything like that. And you knock on the door and go, hey, do you need help? And right now, they're going to fucking clutch their chest and say yes, okay? Um, and, uh, and you just start working for them. Like, you can get into the trades quick, just like quick as hell. The main trade that I would go into right now, if I had it, 
to do all over again is I would go into welding. Uh, there, there, there are not enough welders in this world. Ice cream. This is the best stuff ever. Oh, in any event, ah, ah. HVAC is a fantastic one. I'm actually trying to talk to a guy about starting HVAC to my company. He's over in Tennessee, and I really want to talk to him about it. Our schedules just haven't lined up yet, but uh, Ryan Blackhawk, yes, welders make banks. So if you're in a regular job and you want to go have a, like a really good living and be in demand, uh, go be a welder. If 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 you're a welder locally, you can make good money. If you're a welder that travels, you can make ridiculous money. Um, and, you know, but it's not easy work. It's hard work. It's cold work. It's hot work. It's difficult work. So uh, apparently there's somebody in the YouTube chat named God, and he says, I'm looking good today. Or, or maybe God is a woman. I don't know. But according to God in YouTube, I'm looking good today. Which is crazy because I slept like shit last night and I'm tired as hell now. So uh, looks can be deceiving. Um, but Brian Cohen says welding is the truth. It's a path to a well-paid career. Um, and welding also has more math in it than you would think. Um, it's uh, Let's just say it's over my head. Um, but I have a lot of respect for those guys. Um <laughs> somebody says if you're an underwater welder you make more yeah and if you're a nuclear welder you make even more and so on and so forth there's always specialties and there are always these specialties that make a shit ton of money but you have to ask yourself how many nuclear welders do they need how many underwater welders do they actually need it's sort of like whenever i was like like a kid you know and i'm like nine years old and it's like oh what do you want to be for a for 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 a living and you want to go be a marine biologist and study dolphins, okay? Like, do you know how many people have gone to school to be a marine biologist and study dolphins and then realize that there's only three jobs in the nation that do that? Like, how are you going to compete for that job? I mean, it sounds cool as shit. I want to be a marine biologist and study dolphins. Great. Wait for one of them to die because there's three of them. And that's it. So... Yeah, there are really well-paying jobs out there. It's like, listen, I would love to be an NFL football player, you know? Except I'm 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 pretty sure I weigh about as much as one of those guys' leg, okay? Um so if if the failure rate of the business that you want to get into is 99% like it is in football or trying to be a marine biologist, why would you continue down that pathway? It's like my son asked me. He says Dad, I want to go be a state trooper. And I was like, cool. You're probably not going to get it. And he got all pissed at me. And it's not that I don't have faith in my son. It's that I have faith in math, okay? The North Carolina state troopers hire 1% of the people that apply. So for every 100 applications they get, they hire one, okay? That's a 99% chance of failure. I'm not saying he couldn't do it. I'm saying he's probably not going to get it mathematically. You know, you've got a better luck being a Navy SEAL than you do being a North Carolina state trooper. All right. Go join the Navy. They'll take a lot of people. Go apply to be a SEAL. If you meet the minimum requirements, they'll send you to the school. You got a 30% drop or sorry, a 70% dropout rate or whatever it is this week. Okay. What, you got a 5, 10, 15, 30% chance of being a SEAL? That's awesome. State Trooper, it's 1%. Just a different way of looking at it. So. <laughs> it's the same percent of people that make in the military. That's true. Uh, the, the other one is computer programming. Listen, whenever I was in school, all the teachers were like, you need to do computer programming. You need to do computer programming. Computers are the way of the future. Listen, by the time I got through school and got my degree in computers, all the computer jobs are in India. And here's the thing. It made perfect sense for the computer jobs to be in India. 
Why in the world would you hire an American IT company? Because here's what happens, okay? At three o'clock in the afternoon, your computer goes down in America. It's the end of the day and no IT company here can get to it till tomorrow. Except in India at our five o'clock is the start of their day. So now you've got India coming in fresh, ready to go. They solve it while we're sleeping. We walk in the next day, our problem solved. And they have a better training program over there for computers than we do. So all that advice about getting into computers, yeah, great. Uh, no. I wasted so much time learning computers, computer programming, networking technology, computer engineering, electrical engineering, and then could not find a job in computers to save my life. Tell your kid to move to Australia and join one of the state police forces. <laughs> oh my God. Damn, James, you really should be running the country's job economic field 100%, says blessed to saving grace. You know, the funny thing is, is I have absolutely no desire to be in politics. Like, like I don't... I don't want to do that. But I kind of feel like the people that are doing it suck. Like, I was reading an article and it said that it was listing all the congressmen that missed 30% or more of their, uh, like, you know, times that they're supposed to be doing stuff in Congress. Like, they just didn't show up for work. I was like, half the congressmen didn't show up 30% of the time. What other job can you do that at? Like, what are they doing? You know, so it's like, maybe I can be like a substitute politician. Is that something we could do? Could we make it like, okay, uh, you know, whatever politician you got elected, but now you're not showing up. Can you just like have me come substitute congressman for, for you? Because like, look at them. They're not doing their job. The ones that actually show up are few and far between. Um, it's, it's. For the amount of money they make, they are basically professional fundraisers. And 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 I don't get it. So, in any event, the best people don't tend to go into government. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? Um, so, in any event, uh, quick question for you. Viewer poll, there's 333 of you in the YouTube stream right now. My question for you is, how many of you think the economy is going to crash after the new year? Okay, like, listen, I'm being hopeful. I'm hoping the economy is going to keep, you know, kicking along. But how many of you guys think that it's going to crash? Do you think it's going to crash or do you think it's going to go up? So, uh, I don't know. I'm starting to get a little worried about it. You got, wow. Okay, the comments are starting to roll in. Apparently, apparently, you guys all think it's going to crash. Except for like two guys. Okay. <laughs> so what I'm seeing from this live is that there is not a lot of, um, there's not a lot of, what do they call it? Like uh, uh, confidence. There's not confidence in the American economy right now. That's that's what I'm seeing. So I uh, got a couple people in there that say it's going to stumble, not crash. All right. Blessed to saving grace is thrown in there. And I don't usually get political, but he says Biden is literally destroying the U.S. Man, Biden's not doing anything. I mean... For him to be able to do that, he would need some skill and confidence. He's not doing anything, okay? Good or bad. He's just kind of along for the ride. It's the people underneath him. In any event, and some of it can't be helped, but you can't blame that guy. He's he's not doing anything. But in any event, we'll get off politics. Um, but uh, <laughs> the U.S. is stubbing its toe. Inflation is here to stay. Inflation scares the shit out of me. I went to the grocery store today. Now, listen, I eat a lot of protein. Okay. Like if, like if you talk to the people that know me, I eat protein most of the time. And I remember buying eggs for 79 cents a dozen. Okay. Um, 
I remember buying, you know, an 18 pack for like a buck 20. Uh, a dozen eggs right now is nearly four bucks. Four freaking dollars. That means the price of that has quadrupled. Okay. Um, Five dollars at my local grocery store at Walmart will get you organic eggs. But four dollars is the regular eggs. Now, hold on for a second. We've got woven threads in here. And he says cor corporate profits are through the roof. And, and you're right. But can I provide like an alternate view of that? Remember, we just had this thing called COVID that happened. And remember how many businesses went out of business? Like in my area, a third to a half of the small businesses went out of business. Okay. So if let's just call it half because it's easy, easy numbers, but if half the businesses go out of business, doesn't that mean that one supply is down? So price increases and two, the companies that are left are going to make more money. So here's what I want to see. And remember, I'm like, Pro entrepreneur. Here's what I want to see. Half the businesses went out of business. People lost their ass. I want to see people come in and fill that void and fill that opportunity and, you know, uh, start bringing the prices back down. Because, listen, Walmart can charge $5 for a dozen eggs right now. Okay. But what if Billy comes along with 500 chickens? And start selling a dozen eggs for two bucks. Like, Billy can make some money. Hell, Billy could just undercut Walmart by a dollar and still make money. Because he gets to go farm fresh. Walmart, I don't think, can say farm fresh about anything. Except maybe the dust on the floor in their shop. Like, listen, Walmart doesn't even package their meat in Walmart. It's shipped in packed and already died so that it looks red whether it's not whether it's it's fresh or not. Okay. Like you can get old as shit meat at Walmart looks brand freaking new because they die it. Okay. Nothing about Walmart is farm fresh. Competing against Walmart is not that hard. So um <laughs> uh Hemi Boy says buy 10 chickens and just retired. That's funny. I mean like I've got chickens. I've got them because, you know, I want to be prepared if something happens. But, you know, buying eggs is expensive as shit right now. Um, did Billy figure his overhead? See? And there and there we go getting into the true and actual cost. Um, so uh, we had somebody ask, Triceratops says, what kind of ice cream are you eating? And I'm, and I'm eating Dabu ice cream from Russia. It is amazing. You buy it at your local Eastern European store. You can get it at Ukrainian stores. You get it at Russian stores. Um, I don't know. I don't know who thinks that Russia is under sanctions, uh, but we're importing their ice cream just fine. Apparently ice cream is sanction proof. Um, so I don't know who's in charge of sanctions right now, but I'm enjoying Russian ice cream fresh from Russia. I think this shit was made like a week ago. So go figure. Um, uh, and pistol Annie says it's getting to where it's cheaper to have your own. That's true about pretty much everything. I don't know how many of y'all have tasted goat, but did you know that cow is not the most consumed meat product in the world? It's not cow is not the most consumed meat product in the world. Um, the rest of the world eats goat. You can have a goat. Like in most places you can have a goat. Most places let you have, like, if you have livestock, that's cool, you know, unless you're in the city limits or something. But you can get a goat to eat your grass. Now you don't have to mow the grass. And then, like, two goats turn into, like, six goats. Then you have no grass to mow, okay? The, and listen, they'll also eat your garden while they're at it. But then you can eat the goat, which is great. Um... Somebody says kangaroo is, t is tastier than beef or lamb. I've never had the opportunity to eat some kangaroo, but I got to tell you, now that you've put that thought in my head, I don't know what I'm going to do now. Um, oh, yeah, and goats are fun too. Listen, get them when they're babies, play with them in the yard. Once they get old and ornery, eat them. It's not, it's, it's, 
it's the natural evolution of things. When something becomes a pain in the ass, eat it. Um, crocodile is love child of duck and fish. I don't really care for duck, but, you know, kangaroo is game meat. My bulldog loves kangaroo. Did you know that kangaroos love drowning your bulldog? They will literally grab your freaking dog and drown it in a river. It's great. Um, you don't want it to happen to your dog. So, somebody asked me if hamsters and gerbils are the same thing, and I'm pretty sure they're not. But in any event, inflation is through the roof. I don't know what the hell to do about it. And here's the thing. The price of my goods have gone up. I mean, the grocery store bills are four times what they used to be. Um, but I'm not seeing the ability to charge four times for my service. Like, I want to pay my employees more. And, and we are doing pay raises, okay, um, to try to, like, raise, raise that up. But, like... How do you give your employees enough of a pay raise to handle food prices going quadruple, rent prices increasing, the value of their dollar going down, and because the economy is not doing good, you can't charge more for your service? How does that work? Because, listen, I've read a freaking a lot of business books, okay? That shelf right there, okay? Um... The shelf next to it's D and D. I've read those too, but um, but how do you pay your employee more when you can't charge more for your service? It, it it's like fuck, you know. Um, Crystal says, "Holy shit, I'm alive or live." Yes, well, I'm both alive and live at the same time. So, um. I used to work for a food company recently. They raised their price per unit from 175 to 450 and kept our wages the same. That's horse crap. It absolutely is. So I don't know what these big companies are doing, but down here is a smaller company. Listen, we charge $150 to do a service call, okay? So for me to show up, uh, well, for one of my employees to show up at your door, we charge $150. Now... $87 of that for one hour, basically one employee for one hour cost me $87, okay? That covers everything within the company. If every employee is bringing in $87 an hour, we're good, okay? Or every field employee. So I put somebody on a doorstep for 150 bucks. That's about, that's half is going to, you know, expenses. The other half is going towards like, you know, the company. Now, if that employee stays there for two hours and I don't have something to bill for, I'm now losing money. Or what about his, his drive to the next job and so on and so forth? Or what about whenever people cancel? Okay, we show up, they're not there. Well, we can't get paid for that. So there, there has to be something built in. But also you want to pay your people more. So listen, groceries have gone up. Why can't I just quadruple my service call? The price of eggs is quadrupled. Why can't I quad, quad, quadruple my service call? Because you're not going to pay me $600 to show up at your door. Which I say that somebody just paid me $600 to show up to their door because we're going tomorrow Christmas Eve. But like, hopefully you guys take my point. You, we, we can't keep charging the money at the rate that the prices are going up. It doesn't make any sense. Uh, Sharon Fluid says, my lift station is clogged. Can I dive in and unclog it myself? Please don't. Um, a lot of people don't realize lift stations are filled with poison gas, okay? You you should not be anywhere near it unless you have some training. Sonder Link says, plumber, bounty hunter, and D&D &D player. Yes, also septic guy, well guy, notary, um, yada, yada, yada. Pistol Annie is showing her age. She's saying she remembers when chicken was 10 cents a pound. I remember when you could buy a Coca-Cola for a dime. But those days are gone. David Weber says no show fees are common. They are. Have you tried to collect them? Because you can send somebody a bill. 
whether or not they pay it or not, that's that's a whole nother thing. Uh, off topic question, what is the best flashlight you use? Asked by Daniel Case. And the answer to that question is twofold. Number one, I use the Streamlight, uh, it's called the Streamlight ProTac 2A, okay? Or we have this little bad boy. Check this out. I'll put this on here and bam. And this is like all around light. So when it gets dark, this light is awesome as crap. Also has lights on the back and you can set it to strobe and turn off. So this best light that I found and it's on Amazon. You'll just have to browse through Amazon because this company in a stroke of genius didn't put the name of their freaking company on their headlamp. Like, like literally the band just says headlamp. Like, come on. Marketing fail. Uh, Brad has been asking me my opinion about Ryobi tools. Here's the deal. Okay. It doesn't matter what tool you buy. As long as you don't buy like, I don't know, Harbor Freight brand. Okay. They're all made by the same company. Okay. Um, Milwaukee uh, is basically there's a company in Hong Kong and I probably get the letters wrong, but they're called something like TTI. Okay. It's a Hong Kong based company. Um, and they own Milwaukee and like every other brand and they own the patents to the transmissions for the drills. So when you go buy a DeWalt or you buy a Milwaukee or whatever, or Ryobi or whatever, I mean, there's, there's like one outlier that's a different brand. They're all the same, okay? Like TTI owns pretty much everything that has to do with power tools. So it's all the same. Right now, Milwaukee is the, the, the flagship tool. Um, and it comes with like the most perks and stuff like that, but um, they're all the same. So let me scroll down to the comments. I missed some here. Tektronic Industries. Um, yeah, that's the one. Milwaukee, Ryobi, Rigid, all TTI. Absolutely. Um, it's just like which one they're marketing, which one they're putting the quality into. Uh, but the thing is, is stick with one because all the batteries are fucking different. Okay. And listen, it, if you had the, 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 the smallest inkling of electrical engineering and you wanted to, um, if you wanted to make a million dollars, go make a converter to where I could use my Dwalt drill battery on my Milwaukee or vice versa, like make converters for like 12 bucks. Okay. Just a little plastic piece that slides in 3d print the motherfucker. I don't know and make it to where we can use our batteries back and forth. And here's another one, okay? You wanna go make some money. Uh, make it to where there's an adapter that'll go on your drill battery that'll charge your cell phone. Cause it's all DC current. Um, yeah, somebody's saying that they already have those. I, like, I don't know. I've seen them to convert from like Bear to Milwaukee, but I have not seen like a converter for a Dwalt to a thing, but maybe I'm just out of the loop. Um, and they have those too. I haven't seen them. And I've been into Granger. I asked Granger for them. They're like, man, that, that, that doesn't exist. You want to buy a coat that's heated? No, but apparently if, uh, apparently they're already there. Somebody says, do I sell merch? Yes, I sell merch. You can go to my website and buy septic tank treatment. Um, you go to my YouTube page and buy, um, you know, shirts and hats that say septic happens. I do sell uh, merch. Let's see. <laughs> Nick Bigger says we make all of them. We just color them differently. Yep. Uh, Sharon Fluid says I can start my diesel truck with a 20 volt DeWalt battery. I've seen that done. Um, I got in trouble whenever I worked for the cable company because my truck was broke down, i.e. dead battery. And I ended up daisy chaining batteries together 
from my power tools to jumpstart my truck. And at the point that I was doing that and things were sparking, the supervisor showed up with jumper cables about the time I got my truck running. Um, and I got written up for that because apparently I'm impatient. Whatever. Uh, Tony says, yeah, it says, are those D&D &D books behind you? Yes, they are. Uh, let's see. I think this is the headlamp. What kind of works? Um... In any event, let's see. I'm trying to think what else would just make a make a difference in people's lives. Um, it's like I have I have yet to see a good truck or organizer. Uh, you know, for like something to hang on the seat to keep a whole bunch of stuff in. Most of the ones I see on the internet are just trash. Like, you know, like cheap nylon plastic. I really wish somebody would make like a like a really good one. <laughs> I, and Duluth might, but they're kind of expensive. And Andrew Kennedy in the YouTube comment says, for that sweet headlamp, just search for wide beam headlamp. There is one downside to that headlamp. You need the cell phone charger from the 90s. The one that you have to like figure out up, up or down. I, I don't know what it's called, but... Um, are those second edition D and D? See, I play D and D, but I'm not into like all the like extraneous details of what edition they are. So, um, I I I literally have no idea. Um, couldn't tell you. Isn't it something like nine E or something like that? I don't know. Um, 5e there 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 we go maglite flashlight is trash and i'll defend that to the death i used to be a maglite fan mr peter madsen uh the answer is no maglites are not it anymore um definitely not what they used to be well mag mag maglites are what they used to be the problem is is the world has moved on and produced better flashlights than maglite um so there you go. Somebody said a septic tank drone. Ah, uh, I actually got a drone and we use it a lot. Um, it's actually, it's over there. Um, and, uh, they, they are very handy to have in nearly any business application. So in any event, all right, guys. Well, listen, it is approaching midnight. I have midnight my time. There's 340 of you in here. I appreciate you. I'm probably going to uh, go to bed soon. But for AJ Decker, who says he still carries his 6D cell mag light in the car, I've got two things for you. Number one, your batteries are probably dead. And number two, that's a hell of a defense weapon, which is the only reason I would keep that massive flashlight around is because that is a defensive weapon. You guys have an absolutely wonderful day, and uh, I am going to go disappear into a pillow. So, in any event, I'm going to get out of here. Stay warm. By the way, check on your neighbors, please. Check on your friends. It's cold as shit. Uh, go buy a gift card to McDonald's. Give it to a homeless guy. He's not going to be able to buy alcohol with it. He can't buy drugs with it. But, but what he can do is he can stay warm in a McDonald's drinking coffee, okay? Get somebody a Waffle House gift card for 20 bucks. It's 20 bucks, and they can stay warm in Waffle House drinking coffee um, at least through the night. Um, it's it's It really is all of our jobs to watch out for everybody. So you guys have a wonderful night. I'll talk to you later.